click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have discussed about the extraction of aluminium by electrolyting method and now in this topic we are going to talk about the extraction of copper. So how the copper can be extracted from the copper pyrite, so this is what we are going to talk about in this topic. So friends, now in this topic, we are going to talk about the extraction of copper. But the extraction of copper from its own, it requires multiple steps and multiple procedures. So out of which we are going to talk about, that is the main step, that is the first one, that is concentration. So the ores, basically, we are talking about copper pyrites. So whenever the copper pyrites are being obtained during mining, so they are basically crushed. And all those copper pyrites are basically taken in a fruit flotation process and that is because copper pyrite consists of sulfur and the fruit flotation process it only requires the sulfide ores and in this is how basically we can obtain the copper pyrite which is free from the other gangs or which is free from the other impurities and now that copper pyrite that is what we can obtain after the concentration that is what it undergoes through a roasting process and those reactions that takes place in the roasting process that is how basically we can convert or we'll make those copper pyrite to convert into a copper oxide and this is how obviously I'm going to talk about the roasting and what is the reaction that takes place in the roasting that is what I'm going to talk about so the reaction is so in roasting basically two moles of that is copper pyrite and that is nothing but CuFeS2 so this is the copper pyrite so roasting obviously we understand that it is nothing but the process of heating a particular ore in presence of oxygen below its melting point so therefore it will react with oxygen so as to form certain sulfides and that sulfide is Cu2S that is cuprous sulfide along with that of even here that is two moles of FES along with that of the byproduct that is what we could get is SO2. So therefore this is the base product and this it will be converted into gas. The only thing that has been left out is the, this two solid materials and this two solid materials that is cuprous sulfide and this is ferrous sulfide this is what we have obtained and depending on this two we will make such a reaction that is where we can obtain the copper but here basically we don't require iron so therefore we have to remove this iron sulfide also that is basically present in the form of a mixture whenever that is we have oxidized this cu fes2 that is copper pyrite and we have to remove this two moles of fes as well as we have to convert this cus that is cuprous sulfide to copper so what is the further reaction that is what i'm going to talk about so the next step is smelting so in the previous one that is the second step that is what we have considered and that is roasting so in that case the roasted ores that is what we have got is cu2s along with that of that is fes so that roasted ore are basically taken in a blast furnace and that is how we see the reaction proceeds so in this case basically whenever they are considered in the blast furnace obviously the remaining that is the impurity it will get removed out and the main thing is we could obtain metal and what is the reaction behind this this is what i'm going to talk about in smelting so in this case the ores that is what we have got that is the roasted ores it will be reacted with carbon so as to remove the impurity so thereby i'm talking about that is whenever two moles of fes that is that is ferrous sulfide is suppose if it is reacted with three moles of o2 so as to obtain that is two moles of feo along with that of two moles of so2 so here this is the process where we are removing the impurity that is fes so this is how basically we have obtained that is two moles of feo and now this feo it will be reacted with that is sio2 which is acting like a flux and that is how basically it will remove the feo in the form of that is fesio3 which is nothing but a fusible slag so thereby so this is how basically we can remove the impurity that is fes and the only thing that is what we have left out is we see cu2s so we have to convert that into a copper so how can we convert that let me talk about that so therefore the remaining ore that is what we have is basically cu2s that is cuprous sulfide so now that cuprous sulfide it will be taken to the bessemer converter and this process is basically known as bessemerization that is i'm going to talk about so let me explain you with the help of a diagram so friends this is a bessemer converter in which as you can see that is this is nothing but it is very much similar to that of a furnace so in that case we see this furnace is having a lining of that is acidic sio2 and basic mg2o lining inside and here we see hot blast of air it goes inside because obviously a kind of oxidation reaction will take place with the that is cu2s and that is how basically the sulfur 
that is it will be converted into SO2 and that is how basically we can remove the sulfur from CO2S and thereby we can obtain the pure copper but this would not be too much of pure in fact this would be around 98 percent of copper purity if you are talking about so this is what we can obtain over here and this is nothing but the molten mate and what is molten mate molten mate is nothing but a mixture of cu2 plus a mixture of that is fe plus that is what we can obtain from that is cu2s so this is how basically a molten copper is basically obtained and this is the remaining slag that could be easily removed out so now the purity of the copper is around 98 percent but we can also further purify it to 99.99% by doing an electrolyting method. So this is the Bessemer converter and what is the reaction that takes place over here? This is what I'm going to talk about in Bessemerization. So in Bessemerization basically the thing that has been left out is CO2S. So now this CO2S obviously it will undergo through a process that is known as Bessemerization where it will react with oxygen so therefore it will react with three modes of oxygen so as to obtain the main part that is two moles of CO2O. That means we have converted this cuprous sulfide to cuprous oxide and thereby we can remove that is SO2 as a byproduct that is two moles of SO2. So this is a waste gas that it will be getting eliminated then what the main thing that is what we need is we have to convert or we have to reduce this CO2O. So in this case the CO2O that is cuprous oxide it will be reacted with the remaining CO2S and thereby we can get that is copper as the main component that is what we need that is six moles of so this is how basically we can get copper but the thing is even the sulfur dioxide even in that case it will be removed but we have to balance this reaction and that is how basically we'll write here as two moles of CO2O whenever it is integrated with the remaining CO2S so we'll get SO2 as a byproduct and the remaining thing is six moles of copper is what we could obtain so this is the reaction that takes place in Bessemer converter but the thing is this copper that is what we have obtained is not completely pure so therefore so as to make it a pure copper we are converting letting the reaction to undergo through a electrolyting method and this is how we see we can obtain 99.99 percent of purity of copper so based on that let me give you a diagram so that we could understand it in a better way so the copper that is what we have obtained and that is after bessemerization that is basically added on a sand mold and that is how basically we could get blisters of copper that is on the surface. So now this is basically an impure copper and that's the reason that it is connected to the anode or it is acting like an anode when we are connecting through an external source like battery and this is but a pure copper which is acting like a cathode. So in this case a redox reaction will take place and this is an electrolyte that consists of 50% of the CuSO4 along with that of 5% of H2SO4 which is acting like an electrolyte and through which basically the oxidation and reduction takes place in such a manner that is all the Cu2 plus ions that is basically present in the electrolyte it will get deposit on the cathode not only the electrolyte which consists of Cu2 plus but the blister copper that is what we are considering over here even that consists of copper so it will get dissolved or it will get oxidized and all the Cu2 plus it will get deposit on this pure copper thereby we are converting this impure copper to a pure copper and this is how basically we can get an impurity that is known as anode mud. but this is the main thing that we require is extraction of copper so therefore this where all the process where we can convert the copper pyrite to pure copper and this where the few methods related to it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have got an idea that is how basically we can extract copper from copper pyrite and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe channel. thank you so much